Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In today's video I want to show you 12 applications which can make your life a lot easier. And just to avoid any misunderstanding, no one sponsored today's video. It was made possible by the support of my awesome patrons. So with that out of the way, let's dive right in and start with Fancy Zones, which is part of the free Power Toys collection from Microsoft. The Snap Assist feature in Windows 10 allows you to organize the space on your desktop more efficiently. But when you have an ultra-wide monitor or use a monitor in portrait mode, then the Snap Assist isn't that useful. With Fancy Zones you can create custom areas on each of your connected monitors to snap applications to. So when I press and hold the Shift key on my keyboard, I can snap any application to one of the areas I created in Fancy Zones, which allows me to take much better use of the available space on an ultra-wide monitor as well as on a monitor in portrait mode. And if you like, then you can even have Fancy Zones automatically move applications to the last known zone so that they always open up in the same location. If you like to keep your desktop clean and organized, then you should also take a look at Fences from Stardock. With Fences, you can create areas on your desktop to group shortcuts, files and folders. You can also create what is called a folder portal, which allows you to directly access the contents of a folder from your desktop, which I love to use for my downloads folder. What is also neat is that these fences can have a scroll bar, so they can contain quite many items. You can also set them to collapse automatically and you can hide all fences with a simple double click of your left mouse button. So if you like a clean desktop then you should really take a look at fences. Cleaning up files and reorganizing how you store data on your PC can quickly turn into a quite annoying task as the Windows Explorer will do all operations at once instead of one after the other, which does have quite an impact on the performance of an ordinary hard disk. TerraCopy fixes that issue by giving you the choice to either execute copy and move operations one after the other or all at the same time. I've been using TerraCopy for a very long time now and it's one of the first applications that I install when I do a clean setup as it makes handling files and folders just so much easier. There is a paid pro version, but unless you want to run TerraCopy on a Windows server or need one of the additional pro features, the free version should work just fine for you. NetLimiter is an incredibly powerful and feature-rich software which allows you to control the network traffic on your PC. Unlike another similar application which you see heavily promoted on YouTube, NetLimiter does not simply use the Windows Firewall. Instead it comes with its own firewall engine, which is one of my favorite features. When I want total control over which applications and services are allowed to access the internet, then I just have to click on internet and then set the inbound as well as the outbound blocker to ask. Now NetLimiter will alert me when an application or service tries to contact the internet. Here I can then choose to either permanently or temporarily allow or deny that application to access the internet. I can also use the built-in bandwidth limiter to set individual upload and download limits per application or I can set a global limit for connections to the internet as well as the local network if I want to. NetLimiter also shows you all IP addresses an application established a connection to as well as how much bandwidth they use, which is very useful when you want to find out which IP address belongs to the game server you are playing on. You will also find the Priorities feature in NetLimiter, but if you plan on using that to fix problems caused by buffer bloat, then you will find out that this won't help you unless your PC is the only device in your network which uses the internet while you are gaming. The proper solution to fix issues with congestion or buffer bloat is to use a router which supports smart queue management. If you want to learn more about that, then you can find a few links in the description. When you install a new GPU driver or get a new graphics card, then it can happen that an old driver causes issues. If you find yourself in a situation where you suspect that an old driver causes a problem and the uninstaller of that driver is not enough to get rid of that issue, then you should take a look at the free DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller, which will eliminate all traces of your old GPU driver. I use that software quite a lot when I test different graphic cards or driver versions and it helped me out many times in the past when I ran into an issue that was caused by leftovers from an older driver or when I switched between AMD and Nvidia GPUs. Over the past few years Microsoft improved the audio options in Windows 10 quite a lot as you can now change the default input and output devices per application. 
So if you use, in example, Nvidia's Shadowplay to capture your gameplay, then you might have experienced the issue that the audio from Discord or Spotify is also part of the recording. With voice meter, digital audio cables and the Windows 10 sound options, you can not only ensure that your Shadowplay gameplay captures only contain the audio of the game you are recording, you can also get separate audio tracks for game audio, Discord, Spotify, your microphone, etc. when you use OBS to record or stream your gameplay. Combined with the Windows 10 sound options, VoiceMeter simply allows you to take total control over the audio on your PC. If you want to know more about the setup process, then you can find a link to my tutorial in the description down below. If you use your PC to play games, then you surely had to edit a config file at some point. Either to get access to a feature or setting that is not exposed inside the options menu of a game, or to mod something in a game like Minecraft. There are many reasons why you'd need to edit a config file. Most of you have probably used Notepad for that, and that's fine. But if you have to edit the same config files on a regular basis, then you just want to open the editor and have that file waiting for you in a tab, ready to be modified. This is the main reason why I've been using the free Notepad++ for many, many years. I know that it can do a lot more, but what I love it for is that it makes it so convenient to get quick access to the config files I have to edit on a regular basis. An alternative, which some of my subscribers recommended, is Visual Studio Code, which is even more powerful. I've been using it for a while now and I like it quite a lot, but if you just want Notepad with tabs and don't need any more advanced features, then Notepad++ will do the trick just fine. I don't know how you feel about it, but I hate that Photos app in Windows 10 and I will keep using the old Photos viewer until Microsoft completely removes it from Windows. But while the old Photos viewer is still present in Windows 10, you have to edit the Windows registry to let Windows know again that this application can be used to view pictures. Luckily there is a tutorial on 10forums.com which explains how to re-enable the old photos viewer and they also provide a registry file in case that you don't want to edit it manually. So if you also hate the new photos app in Windows 10, then take a look at the description down below where you can find a link to that tutorial. Even though SSDs did get a lot cheaper over the last few years, you might still not be able to fit all your favorite games onto a single SSD because of how big modern games are. So what you can do is get a large, relatively inexpensive hard disk and install all your games and launchers there. Then, for the games you want to take use of the performance of an SSD, you simply move the entire installation folder of that game over to that SSD. And then use the link shell extension application to easily create a junction in the original location. That will let the launcher and Windows believe that the game is still located in its original location while you actually moved it over to your SSD. That allows you to quickly and easily move games, as well as any other application or folder on your PC to a different location, without breaking anything or having to reinstall that application or change the installation folder inside the launcher. Even with very efficient codecs like H.264 or H.265, the folder which contains all your gameplay captures can quickly grow very large. In most cases you only want to keep a small section of your recording where something interesting happened, but cutting the video is usually very annoying as most video editing applications will re-encode the video, which can take quite some time and might also lower the image quality of the video. The free AVI DMUX makes this process very fast and painless as it allows you to cut videos without re-encoding them. You simply open the gameplay capture you want to cut, select the area you want to keep and export the video. That way you can quickly and easily free up a lot of space on your hard disk. ShareX is an insanely powerful yet free screen capture tool which can dramatically speed up your workflow. You can easily customize the area you want to take a screenshot from, you can do some image editing and, the feature that I love the most, ShareX can upload the captured image and provide you with the link to that image. So if you have to create screenshots, then you should definitely take a look at ShareX, unless you think about using it to create screenshots of games running in exclusive full screen mode, as that will in most cases result in a black image, because ShareX cannot do the complex hooking which is required to capture a screenshot when a game is running in exclusive full screen mode. So for game captures, you still have to rely on other applications. And last but not least, 
the MSI Afterburner and RTSS, which is included in the installer of MSI's Afterburner. As you know from my recent videos, RTSS is a very good frame rate limiter, which provides stable frame times while not causing a massive input lag increase. But when combined with MSI's Afterburner, it allows you to monitor many aspects of your PC in real time, like CPU load per core, CPU temperature, GPU load, frame rate, frame time, voltages, there is a lot that you can monitor and you can fully customize how that information is presented to you. So if you want to troubleshoot issues like frame pacing, find out if you are CPU or GPU bound, or if you just want to optimize and tweak the settings in a game to make it run smoother and be more responsive, or if you want to do some overclocking, then you really have to take a look at MSI's Afterburner. Now I know that there are a ton of other useful applications that I did not show in today's video, like many of the obvious ones, VLC, OBS, Media Player Classic or 7-Zip. But if you know an application which you think is underrated, then please leave a comment, as I'm always interested in software which can further optimize your workflow or provide a better or unique approach to tackle a specific task or use case. And that's all for today. Big shout out to my patrons for their support, which allows me to keep making videos for this channel. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more, ring the bell to get notified when I upload my next video, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.